and Jerry, it was God, we serve God, an all-knowing God. And he had everybody close around the perimeter that when they called for help, mm -hmm. we all came. Exactly. We were close enough to come to, um, to be with Lorena. Yes. And then throughout the whole entire week, um, it's been nothing but so evident how God has been speaking so loudly and visibly that they have even noticed. Mm -hmm. And they have even praised God. And, and so, and Sylvia, uh, she, she had, um, she had applied for citizenship mm -hmm. and the card came. Mm -hmm. So she was so excited because, you know, she's pretty burnt out with the whole situation. And now Jerry being down, that everybody sees as a fortress, mm -hmm. you know, now he's down <coughs> and you have this little itty bitty Sylvia with Jerry and Marina together. So it's kind of overwhelming, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, continue prayers for them and also for uh, travel mercies for myself that will be leaving in, mm -hmm. uh, in a week. Okay. So, yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, Stella. For the salvation of my children and grandchildren. Amen. Amen. Because we all do uh, pray for our children. What I can tell you as a father, we need to intercede for them. We need to continue to pray for them. Even though they don't want to pray. If they don't want to pray. But at least, because if I'm here today, I can tell you it's the prayer of my mother. Amen, somebody. I mean, that's my personal bias opinion. I think I remember there, there would be more women in heaven than men. <laughs> really? Because you go to any churches. I mean, it's packed. Yeah. Because men, they have that uh, a gusto, oh, that ego. Man, let it down. Mm -hmm. Because we need to see Jesus. Amen? Amen. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yes, yes, yes. It looks like we have combined all the praises and the requests together. <laughs> okay, so I might as well uh, just go on for, with the prayer. And we need to remember uh, Peter and Kathleen and, um, and Kenny as they travel because that's a long flight. Yeah. And I pray that uh, for traveling mercies for you guys. And when you get to the motherland, just remember us here. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. And um, uh, I want to thank my sister over there coming uh, to visit us. Remind me your name again. I know it's Mary, but when I talk with Brother Guy, that was a different name he told me. Jocelyn. Jocelyn. Yeah. Jocelyn. Okay. okay. And Alexandria. Alexandra. 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 All right. All right. My mother's last name is Alexander. Alexander. But, uh, yeah, Alexandra. Very good. So we hope that uh, you continue to come. Da souhaite que vous continuez vini parce que go benediction. Loving na l'église bon Dieu. Well, I just said, I, I'm speaking in tongue. Amen? Amen? So that's what the Bible talks in the book of Acts. So take another language so we can speak in tongue too. Amen? Amen. <laughs> well, I told her I welcome her and I pray that that's not the last time. Come and visit us again. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. So time for our prayer. Let's bring our requests uh, before the Lord and may His will be done in our lives. Amen? Amen. As far as you can, you can kneel. Let's kneel together. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your mercy, thank you for your grace, thank you for your protection, and thank you for your watch care. Dear God, today is a day of rejoicing. Today is a day of peace. Today is a day of drawing closer to you, Lord, because we can tell, Lord, as we put our burdens aside, as we put things um, on the back burner, dear God, and give you your time what you want for us, Lord. Like it says in Exodus chapter 25, verse 8, let them make me a sanctuary so that I may dwell among them. And dear God, you truly want to be close to your people. You want to be nearby, dear God. Because if you're not nearby, dear God, the enemy would have his way. But thank you, dear God. You protect us. You uh, watch over us. You bless us. You keep us in your tender care, dear God. And for that, we say thank you, Father. 
And also, dear God, we have requests like uh, Stella is asking for uh, the salvation of, for her children, the Heavenly Father. On a weekly basis, Lord, we lift those requests and ask you, dear God, to please intervene in their lives, Lord. Walk with them. Guide them, lead them, Heavenly Father, because the prayer of a mother is very powerful. So, Father, I just pray that you continue to be with Stella's children in a special way, Lord. And Jerry's um, uh, always asking, Father, for the salvation of his children, the Heavenly Father. We lift them before you and asking you, dear God, that you will draw closer to them, Lord. And, Lord, what I believe is the fact that we lift them before your throne of grace, Lord. We pray for them. We know, dear God, that you keep them, Father, from the enemy's camp. You keep them from the enemy's grip, dear God. And blessings are showering upon them, Lord, on a daily basis. And we thank you, Father. We are asking for traveling mercies for the Gacha family, Father, going to uh, Africa tomorrow. So, Father, we pray for a safe flight, dear Heavenly Father. We pray that, Lord, you will be the pilot, uh, assisting uh, the pilot life, the pilot, dear Jesus, uh, flying that airplane. We're asking, Father, for traveling mercy. We're asking for protection. We're asking, Father, that the angels will uh, carry those, uh, the, the airplanes, Lord, on its wings and, may, and give them a safe destination, Heavenly Father. We ask also that you will be with our visitors, dear Father. Bless them, draw closer to them, and let them know and feel your presence that this place, Lord, is called by your name. This place is the place that you have established so that people can come and worship you and call upon you and give you praise, give you honor, give you glory, dear God. We are asking for some of the members that we haven't seen, dear Father. We pray for your blessings upon them. We want to leave Jerry per home before you, Father, and ask for speedy healing, dear Heavenly Father, so that he can be back with us again. Give the family, Father, strength. Give the family uh, comfort. Please, dear God, may your arms of love be around them, Father. And uh, we who have the opportunity, Father, to be here, we ask, we're asking, Father, that you open our ears, open our hearts, open our mind, and help us, Lord, to see the Almighty. Help us to see Jesus. Help us to see the one altogether lovely. Help us, dear Jesus, to walk with you. And I want to leave the pastor before you this morning as he presents the message that, Lord, you will speak through him, dear God. Whatever he has, Lord, either in writing or in the computer, Father, if it's not according to your plan, I ask, Lord, that you remove it. But if it's according to your plan, open our eyes, uh, open our mind, open our hearts, Father, to receive what you have in store for us. And, and like David said, when the service is over, dear God, help us to give honor, help us to give glory, help us to give praise to you because you deserved it all. We thank you, Father, and we ask it in the precious, the altogether lovely, the mighty, the lovely name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen.
I have been, we are indeed grateful for all the blessings that we continue to receive from your hand. Father, you have commanded us to return our time to you. And Father, we are pleading with you to pronounce a blessing for this correction. We go to its intended purposes to take the gospel around the world and to hasten the soon coming. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Sure, you're going to have a children's story today. church and happy Sabbath. Well, we have a new member and we're so excited, yes. Well, today my story is about Queen Esther and the power of prayer. Well, of course, I always have a question for the church. So, who can tell me the Jewish name of Queen Esther? Adassa. Adassa. Woo, look at the church. I know, look at the church. Exactly. So, Adasia, who is also Queen Esther, was a young orphan, meaning that she didn't have a mom and a dad. So therefore, she was raised by her cousin. Who can tell me the cousin's name? Mordecai. Mordecai, yes. So, uh, the, uh, unfortunately, they had to leave their land because another country took over. So the king of the land one day decided to get rid of the queen because she didn't obey. So who can tell me the queen's name? Yeah. Va Vashti. Yeah. Oh. The church. Wow. <laughs> so there was no more. The queen was gone. So when a, the king needed to replace the queen, yes? So he decided he's going to throw a ball. So all the beautiful women in the land uh, will come and he will choose a queen. He will choose a queen, yes? So everybody came, and Mordecai was like, Esther, you go also. And Esther at that time was so beautiful, so he was like, you know, we have a change. But no one knew Esther was a Jew. No one knew. She was Jewish. Yeah. So she went in, and when the king saw her, he was like, whoa, she's so beautiful. Yeah, Kelsey? Yeah. And then she became the new queen, yes? And then while Esther was there, Monarchai was also there, but no one knew that she was a Jew, yes? So there is a man named Amen, yeah? Amen, yeah? Church? Amen, Amen yes? So, but Amen didn't like Monarchai at all. All the Jew. I think they're enjoying the baby more than my story, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah, all the Jews, yes? So he decided to have a plan because he knew that the Jews of Monarchai will never, never bow down to anybody, yes? And he was so angry because Mordecai refused to bow down to him. But remember, Jewish or Seventh-day Adventists or anybody who believes in God, we do not bow down to anybody except God. God. Yes? Y'all see? Yes. yes. So therefore, he made a whole plan to get rid of all the Jews and Mordecai. So he was like, if you don't bow down to the king, you're gonna be, you, they're going to kill you, yes? Yeah. So Mordecai reminded Esther, or Adassa, remember, you're a Jew also, so if we die, you die, yes? So you have to go and talk to the king. But remember at that time, a queen could not do anything unless the king say so. Therefore, a queen could never visit 
a king, yes? That's right. uh, I mean, a, a king, unless the king sent for the, mm -hmm. the queen, yes? Mm -hmm. So Esther knew that if she went, she had a, there is a possibility mm -hmm. she could die, yes? Amen. Yes, Kelsey? Yeah. So therefore, Esther told everybody to go pray, and then she will go see the king. And if she dies, she dies, yes? So everybody was praying. Monica, all the Jew, everybody. So when the Esther decided to go see the king, the king fell, saw her, instead of getting angry, he was happy to see her, yes? Because that's the power of prayer, yeah, yes? And then Esther decided to invite him to a banquet, yes? Him and Amen. And when the king and Amen got to the banquet, Esther begged the king to save her life. And the king was like, what are you talking about? You're not in danger. She was like, yes, I am. And he was like, how? Because I'm also Jewish, so if you kill my people, yes, y'all see? You also will kill me, yes? And then the king felt compassion toward Esther. Instead of killing the Jews, yes, uh, King, Queen Esther, Amen was put to death, yes? Mm -hmm. And God saved all his people, yes, y'all see? Amen. So therefore, Amen. whatever you need from God, what do you do? You pray. pray. Who do you pray to, y'all see? Jesus. You pray to Jesus, yes? And then he will answer your prayer. So if you can't remember at ABC, what do you, who do you pray to? Jesus. Yes. If you can't, if you're sick, who do you pray to? Jesus, yes? So whatever you need, and of course the church knows that, whatever you need, you always pray to Jesus. So this is my story, and I hope you guys learned something, okay? All right, everybody up. He's going to pray, okay. Everybody up, and you know, Elder Jim, he's going to pray. Okay, let's tell Elder Jim. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yes. Oh, he's a little bit big for you right now. Okay. All right. Who's praying? Oh, I thought she pointed to him. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's close our eyes, bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you do for us each day. We thank you, Jesus, that about the story to Esther and how you have saved your people through the king. We thank you for all that you have done in the past ages and what you will do for us in the new t days and new years that come. Thank you in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. Here you go, Mama. You got them? All right. Precious bundles. scripture for today comes from uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 10, uh, from King James Version, it says, Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, Fear none of those things which thou shalt serve. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So, I'm just trying to memorize our visitor's name and 
So you are Alexandra, right? Yes. Alexandra and uh, Mary, if yes. you remember. What about the baby's name? Dallas. Dallas? Dawenski. 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 Yes. Is it from Russia? <laughs> <laughs> Something Russian. Sorry. But uh, oh, we have. Uh, uh, did I get your names? Sorry, but. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you uh, introduce I'm yourself? I'm James. James? Okay. Catherine. And? Catherine. Catherine? Okay. Michael. Michael. So, James, Catherine, Michael. Okay. Uh, thank you for visiting us. So, uh, I came back from uh, Michigan. Uh, the, the spiritual emphasis week last week, so it was gorgeous meeting. Uh, been to a Campo Sabo, they call the Michigan Campground Campo Sabo. And one thing interesting observation is that here in CCC, Central California Conference or Northern California Conference, when we when we go up to the campsite and it's all the way up and high, 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 but. Uh, uh, Michigan Campo Sabo, just right there, Highway 75, and right there. If you exit up, and right there. So I was told a uh, good doctor, medical doctor, donated his property, about 800, 900 acres. Uh, just one condition that, um, please allow me just one, uh, keep just, just one house for my children. And the rest of the property is all yours, the conference only. So the conference maintained the property, and it seems like they hired the children of the donor, and they feed horses and do some maintenance like this. So it was a very uh, gorgeous, uh, very, very interesting. And it's there, it's hotter than here. <laughs> Around uh, 70, 80 degrees right here around 60. Did you notice that we have rain this morning? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is almost uh, June, but still uh, raining. So that's very uh, interesting. We need it. Oh, we need it. Okay. <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, make uh, some emphasis on our uh, vacation uh, Bible school uh, starting uh, July 2nd, and except July 4th, right? We celebrate uh, the Independence Day. Uh, we need the volunteers, and I just asked the Korean church the uh, uh, volunteers too. So let's, uh, I'm very happy to uh, the revival of uh, VBS, so let's see. Okay, today's message is to message to Sermona, and before we open our uh, Bible, let's pray one more time. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here to worship you together. Thank you for our visitors and our valuable church members. And uh, this time, I'd like to uh, ask your presence here again. And all the rest to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Revelation chapter 2, we are studying something, uh, seven churches in a row, so Ephesus was the last one, and today is a sermon. King James, I'm reading from uh, King James, Un and unto the angel of the church in sermon write, these things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Verse 9, I know thy words and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that he may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days, Thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Amen. And it ends, uh, verse 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. 
So a very uh, simple uh, message about uh, four verses all to get together. So our mission today is to how we can apply those messages to our modern life. The struggles that I have. Talking about the Sermona, this is a modern city of Izmir in Turkey. When you see uh, the map here, the reason why I put up the map is because when you read your Bible, right? Geographically, if you know the place, and it give gives you some more sense and more imagination and more comprehensive uh, understanding of what the Bible is trying to say to you. That's right. So this is a modern day Turkey here. Uh, the peninsula of uh, Anatolia, it's not uh, north-south, but it's east-to-west -to -west, uh, peninsula like this. Do you know where the, uh, the capital city is, the Turkey? Good guess. Where is the uh, capital city? <laughs> right. Yeah, she got it. So Ankara is the capital. Uh, many people believe that the Istanbul right here is the capital, but this is the biggest city in Turkey, but not necessarily the capital city of uh, Turkey. But uh, the population-wise, Turkey in general, about 82 million. Pretty a big uh, country. And before the Ukraine and Russia, Russian war, I thought Ukraine is the biggest country in Europe. But when I visited Turkey, and they were so proud of the, the biggest one in Europe. <laughs> because uh, this, this part is Europe, right? Yeah. And this part is Asia. <laughs> yeah. But it's part of a Europe. They thought uh, we are the biggest country in Europe next to uh, Russia. So that's uh, something. So in general population, 82 million. Istanbul itself around 1,500, I mean, 1 million and 500,000 people, 1.5. And Ankara, the, the capital city here, is about uh, um, five, 500, no, no, yeah, 500, let me see. Uh, Istanbul is about uh, 1.5 million and uh, Ankara is a uh, 5 million and Izmir is about 4 million so pretty big the third largest city in uh, in Turkey so when you see this uh, uh, Izmir modern-day uh, Turkey it is a Sermona in old times and it is about uh, 35 miles north of Ephesus. We visited uh, uh, last time. And it is called the Flower of Asia, or the Crown of Asia, an ornament of Asia. Very beautiful city, and attached to the uh, Aegean, uh, the sea. And if you can see the modern city, big uh, buildings and uh, sky rippers. The, uh, the two of us just went through, I mean, passed, passed by a, uh, a site, old uh, rem, I mean, the relics, and it's called uh, Agora. Do you know what Agora mean? What does Agora mean? It's a marketplace. The marketplace is Agora. And uh, this is the site that we visited. Uh, all old uh, buildings, not necessarily brick building, but it's one by one in the top. And it's really interesting because uh, the, the ancient marketplace had three story buildings in the basement, some other uh, facilities, and the second floor is the marketplace, and third floor maybe some residential area. But it still remains uh, here. So now, when I read, when I read the Bible before, and okay, this is Ephesus and this is Sermona, and I had no idea. But now, when I read the word Sermona and these pictures, those pictures hit my mind. Okay, I've been there. So it's, it's very uh, uh, good experience when we read the uh, Bible like this. 
Uh, unlike uh, Korea, Korea have mostly uh, the old buildings made of uh, wood. So when the war broke out and fire consumed everything, nothing. But here, the Roman Empire and brick buildings, not necessarily brick, but uh, the marbles, those structure, stone structures, and stand, stands. So that's very, very interesting. So verse 8, now uh, uh, English Standard Version, it says, The words of the first and the last who died and came to life. Each church has a, something uh, introductory uh, messenger who not necessarily delivers a message, but who, say, who, say, who says the message and uh, there's a, a certain identity what he was and this is basically uh, comes from the chapter one all the description comes from the previous chapter and this is not an exception that uh, jesus as he talked about uh, the messages and this is the one he himself introduced himself like the first and the last who died and came to life the message to Smyrna is the message who, uh, who so suffered and tribulation, those things. So this one, he knows everything. He was the first and the last. And who died? Who was dead? But now he's alive. So this indicates that uh, the great hope that it's not a big deal. We die once, right? But we are not going to experience the second death because he conquered the second death. The first, uh, the Greek word uh, pratos, which means uh, the first or the most important. The last. Eskatos means the last itself and also the least important. So Jesus himself is the one that He's the first and the last, and he's everything. We are, some people think that I'm uh, somebody and I'm very important, and some people might think that I'm, I'm just less important and I'm just so small. But Jesus himself comprised everything. He's the first and the last, and he was dead, but he was uh, alive. And especially focusing on uh, chapter, uh, I mean, the 2 and verse 10 that we read, uh, uh, scripture reading, I guess. And it says, Fear none of those things who shall, shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful to unto death, and I will give thee a crown of Hmm. Let me ask you a question. Are you afraid of some, some kind of uh, persecution, torture, and tribulation? What is your response? Yes? If not, you are human. You are not human. <laughs> and it's a natural thing that when a certain danger came to us and we are freaking out and we are so afraid. But the thing is that, why we suffered? Because not we did something wrong, not necessarily, but we just wanted to try hold Jesus in the center of our lives. That's why the tribulation, the, the something big thing hit uh, your life. The, the message to Sermona, Sermona itself, literally it means a murder. Samona means murder. When you make it a, a lowercase, Samona is mur, and uppercase Samona it's a, the city, the name of the city. So Samona mur itself, and uh, an Ionian city in Asia Minor. This is Samona. When you read the word mur, what comes to your mind first? What is your first? reaction mur any idea when you uh, came across the word in your bible yes uh, steve okay 
fragrant. Myrrh is a natural resin and gum that comes from the Comifora myrrh tree, native to the Arabian Peninsula and parts of Africa. It has been used for centuries in various cultures for its aromatic, medicinal, and ceremonial purposes. So th this is the, the myrrh right here. And when you uh, hurt and uh, scratch some uh, tree, that tree, and it gives some uh, resin and uh, the, uh, the tree uh, liquid, and you try to uh, crush those trees and more the liquid you may, you may get, and dry it, and you get it. Interesting, because when Jesus, Jesus' birth, this material came across by that's a Matthew 2 uh, 11 it says and when they were come into the house this is a Jesus birth scene they saw a young child with Mary his mother and fell down to worship him and when they had opened their treasures they presented the three things right here unto him gifts gold and frankincense and myrrh so, not necessarily more is related to the, the funeral, the service ceremony, those things. But those three things, something, uh, perfumes or some oily uh, gifts to this, uh, this new baby right here. But interesting enough, the same material myrrh, we can read when Jesus they are preparing the Jesus uh, funeral. That's at John 19 and 39. The same the material, same uh, substance right here. And they came to, they, uh, there came also Nicotinus, the, the gentleman, uh, that, that Jesus met in John uh, 3. How can we get uh, saved? And Jesus said, oh, okay, you go into the mother's room again. And no, no, not necessarily, but Nicotinus asked in, in that way. But uh, born again, the experience. So here, the Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of what? Myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds weight. So when I read, when I read this Bible text, this is more than a coincidence, more, more than interesting, because when Jesus was born, the uh, the Magi, they came to Jesus' uh, birthplace and presented uh, three valuable the gifts, mm -hmm. and one of which is more. And here, when Jesus died and preparing his funeral, more again uh, appeared. Uh, well, so what does that mean? What does that mean? I noticed that Jesus is the only child his whole purpose is to die. There's any other children, the purpose is to die for somebody. No. They just want it to be born here and get blessing and prosperous. That's the purpose. But only Jesus is the man, is the is the baby that his whole purpose was to death. Sacrifice. Sacrificial animal like this. So uh, the myrrh, when we read uh, those things, and we uh, immediately uh, we are reminded the holy mission of Jesus had his uh, task and his uh, sac sacrifice. So the myrrh itself, the uh, Arabian origin, it means something pain, something uh, bitter, bitterness. Is uh, the more is all about. So we, when we read uh, the, the the word the more, and we can predict that uh, how Jesus um, would would be raised, and uh, what is his uh, future future purpose, future plan? Is the plan? His plan is to uh, to die for all of us. And let's go back to uh, the verse ten. It gives me uh, the ten days. You may be tested and for 10 days 
you will have uh, tribulation. So I thought about it. What, what, what does that mean? The ten days. And when you read the book of Daniel, and Daniel was on put test, was on the test for how many days? Ten days. When when you feed me something, uh, vegetables and those things, and, and then compare how well nourished will be. Uh, Daniel refused to take any uh, royal, uh, greasy, oily, and heavy, heavy fat food, and just abstain from that. And they tested for ten days. So ten days mean, okay, not a, a long period of time, a very uh, short period of time, and the tribulation is going to be over after the short period of time. That's one thing that I can uh, I can say. And historically speaking, there's an emperor, emperor Diocletian, and I'm just reading in the year of uh, three. 103 AD, Diocletian issued, issued a series of edicts that called for the systematic persecution of Christians throughout the empire. So this emperor, particularly Diocletian, uh, the last stage of the persecution toward uh, Christianity issued by uh, this Diocletian, uh, Diocletian, and uh, the edict was issued in uh, AD 303. So how horrible the edit uh, would be. This is uh, four elements, how they persecuted the Christ Christians and Christian kingdom. Number one is the destruction of Christian churches and literature. So destroy all the Christian structures and the literature. Now I'm very, very afraid of the news coming from uh, China. They, the government, the Communist Party, CCP, they, they're trying to destroy the churches. So, wow, is that something? They just did it on purpose, and how can uh, they deal with the penalty and the result occurred uh, by God? And I'm very, very afraid what they are doing. So back then, the Diocletian, the emperor destruction, uh, destroyed the uh, Christian churches and literature. And number two, the arrest and imprisonment of Christian leaders, including bishops and priests. In modern day time, maybe pastors and local church elders, the leaders. Are you the elder? Okay, come on out here. You go into the prison. <laughs> Ernest, are you the leader of the church? Come on, can you go into the prison? No, I'm just a little le member. <laughs> Okay, but later on you'll find uh, your position. <laughs> okay, number three, the torture and execution of Christians who refuse to renounce their faith, including men, women, and children. This is a real story. During the Korean War, there's a test. The uh, North Korean uh, communist soldier came to uh, invade the South, and they just don't want to know who is the real Christian. <laughs> so, uh, all the Christian uh, family gathered in, in, inside of the church building, and there is a uh, uh, Jesus picture. And uh, the, uh, the co command was issued that those who are going to step on this Jesus picture, and you'll be free. What would you like to do? <laughs> okay. In modern day time in the United States, someone came to our church and asked us to get out of this church and stepping on the Jesus or oh, even Bible and you'll be saved. What would you like to do? It was a trick. The soldier was not uh, the North Korean soldier, and uh, they just put uh, the test of the uh, whole the congregation to trying to find out and screen who is a real Christian was. Because it, there was a, they were from the ally side and uh, screened those people. Those who step on the Jesus picture and uh, okay, this is a kind of fake Christian and you uh, get out of here and you'll be going to die. And those who refuse to step on the Jesus picture and you are the true, real Christian even uh, 
taking a risk that you, you get uh, punished or get killed. But even so, you refuse to, you refuse to renounce your faith, so you are you're the real uh, Christian like this. Number four, Ernst, you are not an exception right here. <laughs> <laughs> The confiscation and the Christian property in a sense. Like this. Oh, by the way, number three is the one, the, the torture, the execution of Christians, not necessarily leaders, right? <laughs> who refuse to renounce their faith and include women, even children. So that uh, crucial uh, edict uh, pronounced and issued, and they were really, really, they were in trouble, whether whether or not I renounce my uh, faith or stick to my faith uh, with Jesus. Good news is that uh, the 10 days are not a very long time. As we can apply to one day, one year principle, yeah, by the skill uh, 4, uh, 6, and another one um, probably uh, numbers chapter 14, was it 34? Yes. The one day, one year principle. And guess what? The Edict of Milan, Milan Edict issued by Roman Emperor Constantinus, Constantine the first in the year of uh, uh, 313 CE. So, so maybe you can apply those uh, one, one day and one year principle. Well, by the way, the uh, Diocletian, the emperor, uh, died uh, 311 uh, CE. Uh, AD, but uh, uh, the strong uh, persecution may be uh, reduced after that, uh, when he, after he died, but guess what, uh, the year of uh, 313. Now, they approved, Roman Empire approved uh, the Christianity. You can freely uh, worship your God like this. But the flip side of the story is that after that, uh, the Christian, the Christian kingdom is declining. Right? They just gave up the Sabbath issues and those things. So I don't know if this is really a good news to them or not. Uh, looking back to our history, I'll give you some hope when you encounter something tribulation, torture, and even if your property, your money, will be uh, ripped off, but still we should stay. On Jesus' mind, Jesus' step, Jesus, where Jesus is. Did you, did you, did you know that? Where is heaven? Heaven is where Jesus is. If, well, we we do not believe the the, the concept of hell uh, like the others uh, believe in that way. But just imagine that if Jesus is in hell, that's the heaven, because where the Jesus is, right? This is the hope. Testimony from uh, for the churches, uh, Volume One. It says, uh, page uh, seventy-eight. It says, suffering has been the portion of the people of God from the days of Mother Abel. So this is not nothing new persecution. This is not just happened uh, yesterday and today. No, it's a, a long, long way back to uh, the first parent Adam and Eve, their uh, descendants, their sons. It happened in the beginning, almost in the beginning. The patriarchs and suffered for being true to God and obedient to his commandments. Did you get that? The patriarchs suffered. Why? For being true to God and obedient to his commandments. So this is uh, something different. When we did something wrong, and the penalty will come. But this is the one that when we try to uh, hold on Jesus into our heart, and it is natural that the persecution and the tribulation will come because we get hold on to it, the Jesus, our faith, like this. So in, in the other in the other hand, if you want wanting to be uh, the true Christian and wanting to be a sincere believer, and nothing in your life happened, no no persecution, no no tribulation, and we have to think about it, I'm on the right track. Because uh, Satan is controlling this world still, uh, until Jesus comes back. 
So he is going to use the various methods to, uh, to give us a hard time, those who dedicate to our life, dedicate our life to God. So this is natural. This is not new. Because God, uh, because we, we, since we chose God as our personal Savior, and the persecution will come. So this is nothing new at all. The great head of the church suffered for our sake. The first apostles and the primitive church suffered. The millions of martyrs suffered. And the reformers suffered. So this is nothing new. This is a, a church tradition. This is not unusual to, get, uh, to be a sufferer. And why should we, who have blessed the hope of immortality, to be consummated at the soon appearing of Christ, shrink from a life of suffering? So nothing to do with the suffering. Because even if we die, we choose to die because of our faith, but Jesus himself will resurrect us and we'll, we won't taste any uh, second, second, uh, second death like this one. When you read uh, the Stephanus, uh, Jesus is going to give us the crown. This is a different term. This is not a royal crown, but Stephanus is the crown that a wreath, a uh, woven victory garland, a symbol of successful activity of situation. When you go through some type of game or competition and you won, then you will get uh, the Stephanus. So when we go through all difficult times, and the Stephanus will be waiting for us. I just wanted to uh, encourage you what you are doing and uh, staying on the right path, walking with Christ. And how can you compare uh, this uh, small, tiny uh, tribulation we may encounter to the abundant the blessing that were uh, prepared for us? Now, we may encounter some difficult times and tribulations and suffering from something various reasons simply because we are living in this sinful world many people got suffered disease and uh, financially they are broke in all kinds of uh, stressful life but I encourage you to hang there to just hang there because through our patience and the reward with abundant uh, blessing from our God. Even if you may encounter some tribulation in your life based on our, our faith, but still, this is the time that we exercise our faith. Even so, we praise our Lord. Even so, we sing the glorious songs to the Lord. When we fall down, that's okay. It is more important to, for you and I to rise up again because God is going to support us and God is going to... He has been leading our life so far. And please remember this. When you encounter some difficult times, and think about your past and how God mercifully rescued your life and saved your life and give, gave you uh, the abundant blessing. So if you remember that a simple uh, experience in your whole life, and it is time that we can also praise His name forever. And don't forget, when you encounter some difficult times, God is still with you and God is going to uh, carry over you and we are going to uh, uh, through uh, this difficult time and we are all the same journey toward him and have hope in Christ and Jesus is coming back and he is going to be our true king of this world and our whole universe so this is the message today and Jesus died for us and, uh, if you
you appreciate his sacrifice and his love, and we have uh, we are going to regain our strength uh, during this event. Okay, um, let's stand and uh, have a closing hymn. Two hundred seventy. Lead me to Calvary. You saved us already, and you're always with us. Lord, help us to be faithful to you, and help us to be uh, your glory to you, and help us to be, uh, as a team, we are going toward heaven, Lord, and we'll see Jesus in faith, uh, face to face, and the day, the glorious day, when we meet again, we'll see all our beloved one. Um, who passed, or uh, we'll see all 
glad faces that are surrounded by uh, around you and help us our faith. Lord, this is our uh, humble desire that you may, so far you have led our life so far, so we gave our life to you again. We wanted to be uh, rededicating our life to you. And Lord, at this time, we just wanted to ask uh, your blessing to those who suffered uh, some a disease or some accident, and also who suffered uh, various reasons of help them to go through these difficult times. This, this is going to be very short, and our glory with you will be forever, and this is going to be eternal. Now, the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the abundant love of our Father in heaven, and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with us all from now to the eternity. In Jesus' name, we say, Amen. 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 God loves you, and so do I. And, uh, have a happy uh, Memorial Long Weekend, and then uh, we'll come back here uh, next week.